Hey guys, after a long anticipated absence, I bring back the Raw Review. Um, this time around I'm going to do something different. I'm going to talk a little bit about Raw, a little bit about TNA, and then I'll just give a final thought about something uh, current, whether it be a TNA, a Ring of Honor, uh, WWE, something like that. <clears throat> anyway, so basically, last night, Monday Night Raw, was eventful in a way. Um, it kicked off with the Authority talking and then Dolph Ziggler had to defend the Intercontinental title against Luke Harper. That was... I was actually surprised by that. And when the title change happened, Luke Harper becoming the Intercontinental Champion, I was, again, surprised. But at the same time, I thought it was a little too soon to be given him a title shot because he just got back on TV and somehow they're thinking that he's going to be a major singles competitor. I have yet to see that. I mean, he was a great tag team competitor. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah um, I'm hoping to see where they're going with this. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a short reign where it's like, okay, we're going to give you the title, but you're going to lose it back to Dolph Ziggler or something like that. But that, but there's something, another idea, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, after that match, it just really kind of went downhill from there because there was a lot of deals with the guest star being Grumpy Cat and a lot of stupid deals with the Miz and San Miz Dow. I apologize. Um, it just seems like a big waste. I did not see what the deal is with Grumpy Cat and everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, just in between there, there's just a long gap of nothing really too big going on. And I'm just going to skip that part and go all the way into the main event, which basically was the biggest contract signing, quote-unquote, that the WWE has ever had. And that was, you know, Team Cena and Team Authority. Cena comes out, talks, 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 says, okay, I would pick anybody. And, of course, I kind of saw how they had it planned out to where uh, they were going to have, you know, Ziggler come out, and then Big Show came out. And I th honestly thought that Sheamus was going to come out. But to the surprise of me, the person that came out after Big Show was Eric Rowan. And he got a really good reaction from the crowd. And I was actually surprised to see him come out. I'm just thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder what they're going to do with him. I know that a lot of people have said that he's not good on the mic. He's not as talented a wrestler as Luke Harper is. But, you know, it's good that they're at least giving him a chance. Um, after that came out Cesaro, which was actually a surprise to me. But, of course, Cesaro turns from Cena and goes to the authority side. Stephanie thinks, oh, it's a big joke, ha, ha, ha. And then the feed me more kicks in. And Ryback ends up joining Team Cena against the authority. They had a big brawl and it ended with a lock, <clears throat> eye lock of um, Triple H and Ryback. And I don't know if they're maybe promoting it for the TLC pay-per-view or for WrestleMania shot. Either way, that match would be awesome if they had it. But then Cena screwed up the tension by hitting Triple H with an AA through the table. And, you know, Team Cena celebrates. And that's how Raw ended. Uh, going on to TNA. TNA, I think, is getting a little bit better, even though they still haven't gotten that, uh, the, what is it? Uh, TV deal. I know that Spike TV and them are still in disputes and everything, so I don't know how that's going, but they have uh, Bobby Roode as the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, and I've seen his matches with Bobby Lashley, which were amazing. I think that they have the kind of chemistry that you can only have with certain, you know, once-in-a-lifetime superstars. Uh, also, they have no X Division champion because Samoa Joe had to give it up due to a injury. He wouldn't say what kind of an injury it was. He just said, you know, he was hurt and he'll come back 
when he's fully recovered to reclaim the X Division title. So, no X Division champion. Uh, Havoc is still the Knockouts champion, and weird thing is, is that throughout TNA, it seems like the most generic move there is the choke slam. It seems like everybody's using the choke slam, which is sad because there's so many other moves that you could do, whether you're a powerhouse or anything. Uh, and the tag team champions, a big surprise, are actually James Storm and the Monster Abyss. Uh, James Storm, if you recall, when he was teaming with Gunner, had that Beaster Fire briefcase that had a tag team title shot. He cashed it in on the Wolves. And, you know, he chose Abyss to be his tag team partner. And I think the revolution with James Storm, uh, Manic, the, the Great Sonata, and now Abyss, I think it's just going to be one of those forces to be reckoned with. It's, it is really dark. It's a lot more... I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a Bray Wyatt deal. I think that James Storm Revolution is just growing and growing and growing. Unlike, you know, Bray Wyatt's where it was just like, you know, just the three guys. So, interested to see how that goes. Let's see. Anything else? Um, I think that was it for TNA. Their TV deal is still up in the air. And, um, let's see. Champions. They they're picking up a lot of former WWE guys. They just hired uh, Brodus Clay, which I'm hoping you know. Oh, there was one thing. I did notice that during Brodus Clay's Tyrus's match, it was uh, Tyrus versus Eric Young, and Rockstar Spud was in Eric Young's corner, and Ethan Carter the Third was in Tyrus's corner, and for some weird reason. It seemed like uh, Ethan Carter said Tyrus Crush, which brings me to the big deal. Well, the thing that I wanted to talk about, which was the whole Rusev undefeated streak and who I think should end the streak of Rusev and the Russian invasion deal. I know that there's talk of having, you know, John Cena versus Rusev at WrestleMania, and that's where they would lose, he would lose the undefeated streak. I do agree that maybe it would be a good idea to have the WrestleMania, uh, have the streak end at WrestleMania, I'm sorry. Um, but not against Cena, because Cena is already put over so much that he could be putting somebody else over. So unless you plan on, you know, having Rusev be put over, what's the point of having that and having Cena's, you know, ego boosted even more? If I had to choose who would end the undefeated streak of uh, Rusev, it would probably be uh, Ryback. I would go with maybe Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler. Um, uh, no, not Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has already got a... I'm probably going to have a major story going with him. Uh, but yeah, like guys like Dean Ambrose, uh, Roman Reigns, Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, somebody who could actually use that to their advantage. And I know, I think that would just be better, but I'm just hoping that when Rusev loses his undefeated streak that they don't have him doing some weird, uh, you know, weird deals like they've done with the Great Khali or Santino Morella or with Ryback. When they had like you know an undefeated streak and it's like okay you lost now let's see what else we can do with you we can have you dress up like a clown we can have you dress up like uncle sam have you dress up like this like that i just don't want to see rusev going down that same path because he is a talented guy for a big guy he's very very powerful and i think he does have a great future not probably as a wwe world heavyweight champion but as a great superstar and, you know, I guess ambassador, quote-unquote, to Russia. So, WWE, please do not screw up this with Rusev. And that is it for my Raw review and etc., etc., etc. So, if you like the video, please leave a like and comment below. If you have any questions that you would like for me to answer, I would be more than willing to do that in place at the end. So, thank you very much. I will see you all next week. Peace out.